This podcast is brought to you from Grantwood AEA, an educational service agency that supports school districts in eastern Iowa with a focus on equity, excellence, and efficiency in education for all children. Welcome to episode 57 of the EdTech Takeout podcast that serves up bite-sized technology tips for teachers. My name's Jonathan Wiley, and we are back with Mindy Carney. Yeah, part two. Yeah, part two of four. Part two of four. Or should it be part two of five? No. Nope. Keep going. One of our listeners, (laughs) Daryl Loy, tweeted at us and said that they have a fifth C in their district. And that C was curiosity. Curiosity. That's a good C to have. Yeah, we're seeing lots of fifth C's popping up, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, One of the districts I work with in Cedar Rapids, there's this citizenship. Yeah, I think citizenship is a great one. Mm -hmm. I like that. But we're going but to we're not doing five episodes we're this month. We're not doing month. five this we're month. We're going to be lucky if we get four in. Let's be serious. So. I think we will be lucky, yes. Okay. So um, in case you are just joining us for the first time ever, this is, like Jonathan said, part two of our four episode run for February. We are, well, I mean, because we can, we created Digital Learning Month. Because we can. Because we can. Yeah. Um, Digital Learning Day is actually February 28th, but we thought we would... Um, jump in head first and um, highlight a different seat each week of this month. And so this is week two. We're on to collaboration. But before we get there, before we get there, a little bit of news. We and weren't follow-up. going to do news and follow up until like ten minutes ago. But well, what do you got? You have a I, list. You have I a always, list of four since the last time. Okay, I always get this. blamed. I know that since yeah. the last time, it's been like a week since I've, we've done this, Mindy, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? <right. laughs> Anyway, what's up? What do you got? Uh, we talked about uh, the new share buttons yes, that you got. right. And I happened to see this tweet from Jay Atwood, yeah. which I thought was kind of amusing. And he said that uh, Google Drawings and Google Forms yeah. didn't get the memo no. for the new buttons. Oh, shoot. Why is that? So why make the change and not do it all across the board? So no red button in Drawings and no purple button in Forms. But Forms had a different color button anyway, right? Yeah, Forms has got like a, a send button or yeah, something, right. doesn't it? Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah. So I don't know. I'm sure they'll get there. But, but um, I don't know. Another reason why slides is better than Google Drawings. Oh, don't even get me started on that whole. Maybe Manuel's listening. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. All right. So that was an easy one. What's this next one? Guiding peer feedback with a feedback chat. Okay, so we talked about communication and those like sentence stems inside yeah. of um, Seesaw. Yeah. So I saw this post from Tony Vincent on Twitter, okay. and he's sharing about some of the things that he's doing with um, feedback in, in his classroom and communication with students. And they've got this um, system he's calling TAG, okay. where you, yeah. T-A-G, mm-hmm. tell some things you like ask some thought questions and give some positive suggestions. Nice. And he made out these little um, stickers and a a little flowchart type thing for students to give feedback in the way that only Tony Vincent can with nice graphics and Mm -hmm. all put together um, nicely. So if you're looking for some ideas. He's got wall stickers. He does even have wall stickers. Tony's been utilizing his snow days, I think. You think so? Yeah, I saw you was printing stickers or something because there was they had. I mean, we've had like three weeks off pretty much. Yeah. So I saw he was printing some stickers. So I wonder if he created those wall peels himself. Yeah. So if you're looking for more ideas, I thought I'd uh, throw that yeah. in the show notes and let people take a look at that and see those too. Yeah. So um, Brightner. Although I saw this on Twitter last night, I'm on the t- I'm on the Twitters again yeah. just for a little while. <laughs> Back on the wagon. Back on the wagon. Um, <laughs> just for a DL month, but I saw Spotify is buying Anchor and Gimlet Media, $2 million, $2 million? Um, How much was it? $200 million? Yeah. $200 million. That's I think it was crazy. at least $200 million just for Gimlet Media <laughs> yeah. and then Anchor on top of that. So yeah. we talked about Anchor as a communication tool in the last yeah. episode. So yeah. I don't know what that means. I mean, yeah. Anchor has been free since day one yeah. and hopefully it will stay that way. It's coming off our list if it's not free anymore. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We will not endorse it anymore. We will not endorse you, Anchor. <laughs> it just makes me wonder a little bit about, you know, because they bought a podcasting company and then they also bought like a podcast production company. And that one of the things I like about podcasts is that you can 
pretty much listen to any podcast anywhere you want. Yeah. And now it might be, it's kind of like in TV, you watch yeah. Game of Thrones on HBO, you watch House of Cards on Netflix. It's mm -hmm. like, do we have to go to certain places to listen to certain I podcasts now? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But yeah. hey, Spotify have not done too much harm in the past. So yeah, right. Sure. Hopefully they'll be good stewards. Yeah. All right, so tell me a little bit about this. What's next here on your list? Making audio more accessible? Yeah, so again, fitting in with the communication theme from last week. Yeah. Um, you and I are both kind of uh, iOS people. Yes. We live in the iPad and iPhone world. We do. And so we have a little bit of uh, partiality to that side of the fence. But every sure. so often, I think you just have to tip your hat to oh. the other guy. Oh. And okay. this is um, something that the Android accessibility team has come out with. Okay. It's an app called Live Transcribe. Mm -hmm. And it was created for, um, it was created for the deaf and hard of hearing. And it's an app you put on your phone. And what it does is it does instant live captions anywhere oh. you are. That's and so there's a video of this guy and he goes into like um, a bakery or something. Yep. And the lady says, hi, can I help you? And he's holding his phone out. Yeah. And on his phone, it says, hi, can I help you? Were you watching the Super Bowl? No. This, there, was a huge, there was a really cool commercial for this. Was, was there? Yes. Oh, I didn't you see that. You have to look it up. Yeah. Maybe okay. it was the same one then. Maybe, yeah. 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 And you can also have it from over 70 different languages. Yeah. So if you're talking from someone in a different language, you select the other language and that language will appear on your phone. Yeah. It does all that live transcription um, on the fly, and it doesn't store anything in the cloud or anything. It stores hmm. all on your nice. device. Okay. It's available for Android devices running Lollipop 5.0, which is a Android I don't even thing. know what that means, but okay. <laughs> sure. Um, and they partnered with um, a university that is um, one of the premier schools for the deaf and hard of hearing nice. to make sure that it was all going to be helpful yeah, sure. and useful for those people. So I think it's just really interesting to see um, that kind of technology is out there and yeah. if you know of people that could benefit from that then uh, we'll put a link to the app in the show notes yeah it's pretty cool i would uh, watch that commercial and i'm like geez i i don't know anything about this how have i've never seen this before but they i don't think in the commercial though they ever said anything about like live transcribe yeah download now okay so hmm, interesting good one you win All right. So up next, main course for um, part two is collaboration. Are you ready? I'm ready to collaborate, Mindy. And okay. we, we collaborated oh, we on do. this podcast, we didn't do. we? We do. We collaborate all the time. Yeah. So um, I was thinking about this last night and um, once again, how annoyed I am always with the fact that we call the four C's our soft skills and how much collaboration we do in our jobs all day, every day, all the time. Are you on a soapbox again? I am. I don't. <laughs> anyway, so um, I was kind of thinking about this too and how our team collaborates, I would say, um, fairly successfully with one another and how interesting it is that I feel like collaboration has so much to do with the culture of your team or your classroom or and. You can't just force people to collaborate or force yeah. kids to collaborate. Yeah. And a lot of times, and I know I was, I was guilty of this, that, you know, I did the dirty word of um, group work. And then I'd be like, okay, you guys are going to work in a group together. Yeah. And then I just walk away and then I get super frustrated that the kids didn't know how to work, how to work together. You know, it became like one person did all of the work and the other three kids just kind of you know, either got bossed around mm -hmm. or, you know, we're throwing pencils at each other. Yes. And how important it is for us to, I think, model that for our kids and really be very, I don't know, deliberate about teaching kids how to collaborate with one another. Yeah. It's not one of those things that you're just born and right. able to do when you go to school. I mm -hmm. mean, one of the videos I like showing teachers a lot when we're doing like green screen work is one by Trisha Fogelstead. Yeah, yes. She's got good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And she has this uh, green screen stop motion video mm -hmm. where um, 
the kids are creating these uh, little mannequins and making them move and she puts the artwork behind them but like one of the very first frames she has is she sh- shows all these buttons she-, she made for the kids yeah. and on each button there's a role for the kid one's a director one's an animator one's a camera operator mm-hmm. and everyone sure. has their own role and right. I think with collaboration and they're equally that's- important too yeah right? exactly like, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah sure I think with collaboration it's, it's important to have that kind of structure somewhere mm-hmm. um whether you're collaborating digitally or yeah. not, I guess. Yeah. I um, kind of going a little bit off of um, earlier, too, when you were talking about um, the stems that, you know, Tony had created or how to give feedback. I had found this blog post that I thought was kind of interesting that were um, sentence stems for when you were collaborating in a group. Yeah. And um, how can how you can either. And for kids, too, you know, so like some of them are um, ways that you can successfully disagree with one another. So instead of being like, oh, you're wrong, you might say something like, I see it differently because or um, I agree because of this. But have you also considered this and really talking to kids about how to disagree and have conversations with one another without it being like a complete, you know, explosion in the classroom? (laughs) Yeah. So good collaboration requires good communication, communication skills yeah. so one is building on the other it is it's yeah. almost like we had a plan for oh, doing this Mindy, isn't no, it i know i know i agree yeah and the ability to like compromise as well you know to know that when you're working in a group whether it's group work or collaborative work or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call sure. it that uh, people are going to have different opinions and that your opinion is not always going to be the one that the group goes with for yeah. whatever reason mm-hmm and yep. Mindy's looking at me like, I need to learn some lessons here. <laughs> well, if you were to um, go down our show notes just a little bit, this was one thing that I told you I was going to talk about was um, the Stanford D School has this um, idea around the correct way to brainstorm. Yes. Have you ever seen this? No. You're a liar. <laughs> Because I bring this up to you occasionally, (laughs) like, oh, this is the correct way to brainstorm. Do you know some of the steps in the correct way to brainstorm and to collaborate lots of ideas at one time? I am aware of some people's opinions on how to do that. So first of all, it's important for you to capture all of the ideas. Uh So for students and for adults, it's important to, you know, document everyone's ideas, all of the ideas, and to even encourage wild ideas and let your creativity, which we'll talk about later in a couple of weeks, right? yeah. let your creativity run wild, defer all judgment. So <sighs> while you're brainstorming and sharing ideas, you cannot knock down someone else's idea until later. That comes later. She's shaking her finger at later, me, just so yes, you know. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's great to build off the ideas of others. It's important to be visual, only one conversation at a time. So only one. That's sometimes hard with brainstorming sessions because you might start talking to the person next to you. But it's important for the whole group to hear your brainstorming or your ideas. And it's this is interesting, I think, because in classrooms, we also ask for the opposite. It's to go for quantity over quality when you're brainstorming. You want as many ideas as you can get. It's not as important to have really amazing ideas to start. Yes. And more important to have lots of different ideas. Yeah, I... And there... Oh, no, I'm not done. Oh. And if you were to click on that link where it says Stanford D School, there's actually a modeling of this for kids to watch to kind of get them started so that they can see what it looks like in action. And I encourage you, too, to watch that video, should you so desire. I will admit there have been times (laughs) when we've been brainstorming that I have not followed all of those parameters. I would agree. I the actually I remember step. do you remember when we were brainstorming the yes. name for the podcast? Yes, I do remember. And there was lots of us here, we were throwing things on the wall mm-hmm. and I kept thinking I hate no. all of these. You and hated this, all of them. This is not right. We cannot call it that. This yeah. is terrible and Yes, I got told a few times to keep my mouth yeah, shut. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. I think you did. I mean, I put my ideas forward, but yeah, then yes, sure. I I learned a little bit. But I think it's I I think it brings up an important point that you know collaborating isn't just something that comes naturally for everyone, and, and in fact, you know, kids can often be 
I mean, my kids are anyway, somewhat self-centered. And so it can be hard for them to collaborate or accept other people's ideas. And, um, you know, even to have some sort of fishbowl like that. So this might be a video that the students can watch, but to have a fishbowl where you can have kids working collaboratively and have the um, rest of the class standing around them, you know, and kind of watching how to be successful in that. I think it's so important. I think it's something that we miss out on. So have I made my point about how important it is to be deliberate about teaching kids how to collaborate? I think I can step off the soapbox. Yes, and I, I won't edit any of that at all. <laughs> I'm sure. Right. Liar. <laughs> so if we were thinking about um, collaborative tools, what kind of things come to mind for students that might want to find a digital space to collaborate? So, um, you know, I had mentioned this last week that Gina and I have been working with Hattie's research. And um, if you've ever been to Grantwood AA, you know that we love to use the jigsaw method. Yes, we do. Love, I mean, we use the jigsaw method for everything. We own it. Yeah. We do. Um, so using Google Slides with the jigsaw method, um, I think, is a really great way because one of the steps that we often miss with the jigsaw method is then collaboratively coming back to our main original group and sharing with um, others what we had learned from that um, as we were kind of sharing with the smaller groups or the breakout groups. Mm -hmm. um, and Google Slides is such an easy way when you open that up so that anyone can edit it that all of the students can see what everyone had created. Um, so I feel like Google Slides nails it. Yeah. More so than Google Docs even because Google Slides can be more of a visual, I think, than Google Docs can be. And the thing with Google Docs is, I mean, everyone talks about the Google tools and how great they are to collaborate. And yeah. I, I agree, they are. Yeah. But if you take like, 25, 30 kids, and you put them all in a Google Doc. Oh, mother. It's insane. Oh, Pete, yes. Now, <laughs> yes, you can do it, but you you really need to break it up into like tables or pages or something. But Google Slides is really good because you can just say, you guys have slides one through three, you have four through six right. or whatever, mm -hmm. and you work on it. And you can still have the advantage, like you said, of seeing everybody's work as a whole, but also being able to have just that mini space inside a space to collaborate with your group. Yeah, and I think even for our um, littlest students as well, and it takes a little bit of setup, but you can get your little students into um, Google Slides and then just on that initial slide, put a student's name and link them specifically to a, a slide in that slide deck. So if my name is Mindy, which it is, I see Mindy on that first slide, I tap on it and it's linked to my slide, just my slide. So I don't have to go in and find a blank slide or you know get in on someone else's slide. Um, but with a little bit of setup, I think it's really, it's just, and you can draw on it, you can do all kinds of things, better yeah. than Google Drawings, and right? You could, you could reuse that template again. Yes, and so make a master else. one and yeah. then just make copies of it for the yeah. year. Yeah, better than Google Drawings. Yeah. Better than Google Drawings. <laughs> Which doesn't even have that new button yet. Doesn't even have the new button. Yeah. This button's still blue. Hey, I was at a school today, and um, this morning before I came in, and yeah. uh, the teacher said to me, has anyone bought Padlet yet and changed that pricing structure? <laughs> I said, I don't have any crossed. news or updates on that one. I but know. Padlet's also a good tool for collaborating and that brainstorming thing, a yeah. good way to have lots of ideas yeah. up yep. in one space, and then you mm -hmm. can organize and pull some of those ideas around. Yeah. So, yeah, if you pay for Padlet, more power to you. Um, yeah, lots right. of great, lots of great tools in there. And yeah. like, even like organizers, graphic organizers and stuff, ways to, to put things together. Yeah. So, and I know I've mentioned this tool before, but Scratch has a really great, I think, setup for collaboration because... Um, with the Scratch community, students can go and look inside each other's um, code. They can remix. I think it's, uh, and I know I'm sounding like a broken record I've mentioned this before, but students um, a lot of times find that when someone takes their idea that's stealing from them, in, in some aspects mm -hmm. it is, right? Mm -hmm. um, but with Scratch, you know, all of that is built in where um, if you remix someone's project, they still get, you know, a little shout out at the bottom, but I think it really kind of pushes students to maybe accept that someone taking your idea and putting a 90 degree twist on it is in fact awesome, right? It yeah. changes things. It's how we move forward. Um, but being in that scratch community, I think is just kind of a neat way to um, go in and just see what other kids are doing and um, provide feedback for others, ask questions. There's 
I mean, if you ever go in there, there are kids that have like all like a gazillion followers and they're like, oh, I was asked to make this tutorial about how I did this. Here's my tutorial to show you how I, I don't know. It's just a really neat place. I think that has a really, really collaborative feel to it. Yeah. And I think that's interesting in a couple of ways. One being that when we think about collaboration, we often think about like live collaboration you can yeah. collaborate on something but just not do it at the same time yeah, sure so you could be working on we could be both be working on like the show notes for this doc and you'll right. put some stuff in sometimes yeah. i'll put some stuff in later in the day and it doesn't have to be at the same time it right. can be and doesn't always have to be but the other nice thing about that scratch model is that that mirrors something that i know um some some developers and programmers use in real life because mm -hmm. there's sites like uh, github where you can post all your code online and say, hey, I made this thing, here's the code. Yeah, if you cool. want it, yeah. take it, mess with it, change it, adapt it, whatever. So mm -hmm. it's that kind of community aspect to it too. Right. And Lynn Kleinmeyer would definitely have a say, though, that if you're borrowing someone's ideas, yes, make sure you give credit where credit is due. Absolutely. I want her to come at me with a baseball bat. She might do that. She might. <laughs> Um, so I don't know, this probably maybe could have gone in, um, the nugs session section of this, but I found this really cool thing called Collaborify and I know I made you go look at it. Are we just going to gloss over the nugs? No, we're not. <laughs> I was going to talk about these Collaborify apps that I found. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. So I, um, this last week, maybe last week, Gina and I were, um, once again, working on Hattie because Hattie is my life right now. And we were looking for um, just some different tools, something different. We often get asked, what else do you have? What else do you have? And although it's not about the tools, sometimes you just need something new for yourself, too, to try. Yeah. Um, so I found these Collaborify um, tools that can also be added to your Chrome. <laughs> this is where it gets tricky. Are there Chrome apps or aren't there Chrome apps? I never know. But um, you can use this just as an online tool. So there's Collaborify Chart, Collaborify KWL, Collaborify Writer, which I think you looked at. Yep. Um, Collaborify Flipbook and Collaborify Map. And they're actually built for um, kindergarten through sixth graders. And they allow multiple kids to be in at one time. Um, the one that I looked at was the KWL because I kind of was like, oh, KWL to me is always just a paper up on the wall, which it definitely can be still. Um, but it had different spots where kids could go in and add their own ideas to the KWL. Um, so just kind of a digital place to do some of those things. And I had never heard of it before. I don't even know how I found it. it just popped up in my Google search. So these are from the Intergalactic Mobile Learning Center. Yeah, right. So that's quite the name, isn't it? It is. So when I was looking at it, from my understanding, it's the University of Michigan, University of North Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like they must have collaborated to create these apps for kids. Oh, this says grades one through six. I think I said K through six, but yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at that KWL one now, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. It's just like a little slider that goes back and forward. It's got um, a nice text-to-speech kind of engine built in to mm -hmm. all these apps, I think. Yeah. And then you just add things like, what do we want to know? And what do we already know? And yeah, so those yeah, are some not a nuggets ton of bells there. And, there's no. not a ton of bells and whistles, but I think it's, they're, um, you oh. know, they're first through sixth grade, so they don't, they just... The interface is really simple and it's uncluttered. Very simple. So yeah, I think that right. really helps focuses you yeah. on on the thing. You're not going to be able to insert emojis and pictures and all the right. other multimedia type of stuff, but that's good sometimes yeah, just right. to keep kids on yeah. track and stuff. You can it does have a um, camera option in it if you one of the apps does. Oh no, I can't remember which one, but yeah, so get in there and play with it a little bit and see what you think and um I don't know. I thought it was just something kind of different. So I could have put it with Tech Nuggets, but I thought it went better with our collaboration conversation today. I think so, too. Yeah. Can I mention one more thing? Sure. And um, you and I watched this, but uh, you had, I thought, brought up an interesting point when we were not recording about learning spaces. Yeah. So That's do you want to talk true. about that a little bit? And well, I know when we did our 4C summer camp last uh Summer. Summer. Yeah. <laughs> we did the summer camp was in the summer. summer? Uh -huh. Did this? This happened in the summer. This There was summer. Last summer. Last summer. And we had uh, Dr. Robert Dillon come as yeah. our kind of guest speaker on the last day. And he did a really nice job of tying together 
all the four C's that we talked mm-hmm. about and showing how they, they come together right. um, in the context of learning spaces. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think when you're thinking about, you know, what effective collaboration looks like, that you want to think about the space where your students are collaborating in. Because yeah, right. if your students are all like, elbow to elbow and all the groups are right next to each other it's going to be hard sometimes to to do that with you've got like a fixed desks all in rows and and all the rest but you can maybe make some space for kids to either push the desk to one side or to think about different ways of arranging the space so that it works better for that collaboration time yeah i um had well and i know you mentioned um dr robert dylan as he's now noticed on Twitter, yes. not idea guy anymore. No, Doctor Robert. Dillon. He's still an idea guy, he but is. yeah, he was. We really I- like Bob a lot. Yeah, we do. Um, but he has a book called The Space. You didn't just say that, did you? No. That he is um, co-authored with Rebecca Hare, and um, it's a really great book. It's it's really about um, using the space that you already have. So I think we do see some um, places that are trying to spend all this money on um, providing new learning spaces for their students, but. A lot of times, and I think Bob's voice around this is too, it's more about taking out the stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, like Mm -hmm. removing desks or um, finding more way like collaborative areas in your classroom. Um, And I came across this video that um, him and Rebecca Hare had created called, what did they call it? Spaces to Collaborate. And it's actually part of a playlist that goes around design thinking and things like that. But um, we'll put that link in the show notes. But I think one of the things that they really, really, really um, emphasize is that there has to be collaborative spaces for students to write. Yeah. They bring that up a lot that um, if you're just collaborating on a piece of paper or just within a desk, it still is, you still own that little bit right in front of you Mm -hmm. that um, having collaborative writing spaces is so important because when it's up in front of the group, it's ours. But when it's down in front of me, it's mine. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think about, like, we've started to do that in Grant Wood. We've painted some walls with yeah. our whiteboard paint. Mm-hmm. And that's not an option for everybody I know. Right, but sure. there's, there's different ways to hack that with things. I mean, I've seen kids writing on windows with, you know, dry erase markers yeah, and stuff right. like that. There's mm-hmm. there's ways you can do that where it's getting them out of their seat, getting them up and down, gets the brain thinking and moving and the blood flowing when you're not sitting down all the time to do that collaborating. So, yeah, yeah I agree with that. It's a great book. It's, yeah. it's also very, very visual kind of book. Yeah, it's it not is. like a mm-hmm. chapter book with right. lots of text you in it. You can read it in like two hours, right? Sit yeah. down and plow through it's it. Very, and it's lots of pictures, yeah. lots of graphics and design and mm-hmm. examples. So definitely we'll link to that in the show notes. Yeah, take a look at that um, video too, for sure. I think it's a great video. And um, Rebecca, I love to listen to Re- Rebecca talk. I heard her at South by Southwest and she's just got this, I don't know, She's really enjoyable to listen to. Got a presence. Yeah, she yeah. does. She's a very quiet presence, but it's she knows her stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. So is that it for collaboration? Well, I guess. Yeah. Do you want to come to the decision together? Okay. All right. Up next, my favorite part of the show is Tit Nuggets. I just have one. How many do you have on? Oh, I know. I only have one. It just got some bullet points. Got it. You know this one? Yeah. Okay. I've been on the Twitters lately. All right. I forgot. (laughs) I do. Um, So mine is an old one. This is from like last month when we got snowed out. But, and it's an old one anyway. This is not a new tool. It's been around for a little while. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all right. So my um, tech nugget for today is an old one. It's been around for a while, since 2009, but it continues to update itself um, with different versions, and it's called Incredibox. And Incredibox allows you to create music, um, and you choose different aspects of the music. I'm not musically inclined, um, so I don't know all the different parts, but you can choose your beat from a variety of different um, choices, and your, I don't know, help me, your musical, what else? Your beat, your Um, tempo? There's vocals, there's like sound effects, there's like rhythm and drum sections. And oh, then, yeah. Thank you. Yes. See? All of the different parts of the music. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's kind of fun that you can play with the different sounds and make it sound the way the way that you want it to. 
And they're um, the characters that go with each sound change mm-hmm. clothes depending on what they are. So there's like this little bit of a visual going on with it. Yeah. So this is my disclaimer, however. And I know you don't think I should. I needed to say this, but I feel like I do. Sure. So the character that is singing is a is a bare chested man. There you go. So I'm just going to put that out there. And I um, so depending on the age of your students, you might get a little chuckle. Mm-hmm. But you said you said you didn't think it was a big deal. I felt like I don't think it'd it be should, a big deal for okay. me, but maybe it will be for other people. Just fine. So I'm just I think saying. it's fine to have that disclaimer just in saying. there. Yep. All right. So I created a song for you and I dedicated it to you. Thank you. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Let's hear it. So what I think is really neat about this is that you can download it and you can put it into your own projects, right? So you don't have to worry about um, copyright free music. You can allow your students to create their own music for whatever creative project they're working on. That's great, Mindy. I think it's we don't hear enough of those types of things shared that we, we need musical composition stuff. Yes. We need digital art creation stuff. Yeah. We need things for PE that, you know, yeah. a lot of the stuff is like ELA or, yeah, sure. you know, math. And yeah video and stuff like that so great good job mindy hey thanks i like it okay uh mine will be quick then yeah it's an online teleprompter called Mm teleprompt.me which has been doing the rounds on the twitters like you said um eric kurtz is the person that uh gave me the heads up on this one Mm -hmm. and this is kind of an interesting uh website it only works on chrome and uh you know what i think about that but um what this does that other teleprompters don't do as well is that you paste in your text there and the teleprompter will not move until you start speaking. Mm-hmm. And it recognizes your words that you're talking and it will only move it at the pace that you speak at. So yeah. I think sometimes when you do these things with kids and you have iPad apps and stuff like that, it just scrolls up and down and eventually you have to stop halfway through because the kids have lost it and yeah. they made a mistake yep. and they're trying to catch up and it gets mm-hmm. faster and then it gets yeah, slower right. yeah. as it doesn't go fast enough. So this just moves at exactly the right pace. So I think it's great for video work. You could put it up on a projector. You could have it on a computer mm-hmm, screen. Mm-hmm. You could use it for a podcast script or for fluency work or any of that kind of good stuff too. Yeah, that's a good one. And if you want an iPad version of this, there mm-hmm. is an app called sure. Prompt Smart Pro, which comes in the light version or the pro version mm-hmm. and uh, does the same thing on the iPad if you want one of those. All right. So I'd just like to give a quick uh, shout out to Stephanie Howell, who I heard from last week. She um, reached out because she is also doing some work with Hattie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's a popular guy. Sweeping the nation, let me tell you. And he's coming to the Grandwood area he in is. October. October. Is that right? Super excited. Yeah. I'm sure he's going to bring me up on stage. Anyway, so what? yeah. Um, so she's also doing some Hattie work and trying to find tech tools that support um, Hattie's instructional strategies and asked if we could collaborate together. So I'm looking forward to that. So thanks for reaching out, Stephanie. Collaboration. Yeah. Happening. I know. Look at that. Just like that. Easy peasy. All on the Twitters, which I hate, but... For the good of the the people. people. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So I am at Team Carney on Twitter and Jonathan is at Jonathan Wiley. Our team account is at D-L-G-W-A-E-A. And you can use our hashtag, a tech takeout, to tag the show. If you prefer, you can send us an email to podcast at GWAEA.org. And we've also added an additional hashtag of DLDay. And hashtag DLGWAA just for this month. Correct. Yeah. And we will be back next week. Next week. So until next time. (laughs) This has been the Attack Takeout. We hope it hit the spot.
Um, another place that, um, and I know that I've mentioned this before, but Screech, Screech, but Scratch has a really, am- you and I Screech? today cannot talk. What is up? So I know Screech, yeah, from, Saved Screech by the Bell. from Saved by the Bell. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> anyway, 